There you have it. The repo rate will be increased by 25 basis points. Let's get some insight from our business editor, Devin Murugan. Devin, good afternoon. Can't really say it wasn't expected. Yeah, I mean, there was a 50-50 split that uh, the uh, Reserve Bank will raise interest rates. I think there was a suspicion that it could go that way, and it finally did. So we're up 25 basis points. What does this essentially mean? That the repo rate now sits at 3.75%. The prime lending rate at banks now sitting at 7.25%. So it's going to cost you more for that home loan. And the reason being is that there's a threat to inflation. Now, whenever the inflation outlook appears to be increasing, the Reserve Bank steps in and uses interest rates as uh, some sort of support mechanism to make sure this, the currency remains stable and the chances are that you would get an increase. But let's get more expert insight now from Safiso Skenjana, Chief Economist at IQ Business, to unpack this announcement. I'm not quite sure, Safiso, if you were one of those that called this one this afternoon, but um, it, it was on the cards that if it didn't happen today, it was going to happen pretty soon. Are we now, in your view, in an upward cycle on interest rates? Uh, afternoon, Darren. Um, I unfortunately called it. Uh, certainly not the most exciting news. But I think, um, you know, based on, on, on the data that we're observing, um, and, and as the governor said, that we can, we, you know, they're going to continue monitoring the data, uh, meeting after meeting. But I think uh, oil prices have been a big driver. We've seen even consumer prices in the U.S. up 5.4%. Up We've seen, um, you know, Fed officials uh, agreeing unanimously again to taper off 15 billion per month in their bond buying, as well as, of course, the global supply chain shortages that we are seeing that are driving uh, prices up. And when you put that in context, certainly uh, we've seen the Reserve Bank tend to make more emphasis on price stability as a primary uh, component of the mandate, uh, with a, a view on, on only on growth as a, as a secondary. Mm. And Sophie, so that's an important point, because what you're telling me is basically the mandate of the Reserve Bank. When it sees inflation likely to run away, it steps in and supports the case, really, uh, to raise interest rates. There are some that says this might be too early. The economy is still struggling. Consumers are still struggling. Uh, the Reserve Bank and the MPC should have waited a bit, not raise rates, because it might impact the wallets of consumers and the economy overall. Some might argue, no, we're still pretty much very low on our interest rates. How do you see it? Will this affect the economy and consumers by stifling them? Or are we still in a pretty much easy interest rate environment now? Will we see some negative impact on consumers? We certainly will see a negative impact on consumers because, of course, when you increase the cost of borrowing, uh, some of those costs go and pass through into, into consumer prices in one way or another. I think we often look at inflation from you know, a number of lenses. Is it demand-led inflation or is it cost-push inflation? Often the, 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 the cost-push inflation, I think, is the one that needs the Reserve Bank to be a little bit more cautious when they hike, uh, start their hiking cycle because it's not because the economy is heating up. Uh, it is because that there are prices that are just driving the general levels of, of, of prices in the context of our economy, but they're not household-led, they're not consumer-led. And, and as the governor mentioned, households are continuously coming under pressure now with uh, the you know, higher food inflation, higher energy inflation. Um, and, and that's certainly going to be a very big pressure point. Um, some of the poorest households in South Africa spend up to about 30% of their income on transport alone. And so these are the things that really continue to be financial pressure points for consumers in South Africa. Yeah, and that's an interesting point because, again, I go back to my point. Uh, the Reserve Bank sees to it first that prices in the country do not rise and get out of hand. Hence, they use interest rates as an instrument. It's, it's funny, though, that, you know, he spoke about all the uh, uh, downside risks to this economy growing, the impact of the COVID-19 virus. That still remains a risk. He speaks about uh, the July unrest uh, that hurt the economy uh, so badly, in fact, eating into GDP. Then he's mentioned this time and time again, the electricity crisis in the country, and that's uh, stopping growth from, you know, ventilating or for, for, from the economy growing uh, to the extent that we would prefer it to grow. 
Despite that impact on growth, he still puts price stability first and raises the interest rates. Um, that's an interesting one, and it goes to your point that it's not growth that's on top of his agenda. It really is to make sure prices remain stable. So despite getting some, some lashback from some quarters who might say, hey, you didn't put the economy first, in a strange way, he perhaps did. Yeah, I mean, we often look, I mean, the Reserve Bank mandate pretty much says price stability in context of sustainable economic growth. And so I think it's the layer that brings a contextual view in how they manage the price path. The challenge here is uh, there has been questions around, is the inflation target at its level, the right level for the kind of economy that we've got? Or should we have a higher appetite for example, higher price levels? given also uh, the fact that when the globe sneezes, emerging markets, particularly South Africa's uh, economy, tends to be a lot more responsive. So we're a lot more vulnerable to, as what I said, cost, cost, uh, pu co uh, uh, cost push inflation. And therefore, I think there is uh, definitely a real question that must ask is that can we, even if we keep the mandate of price stability, can we do that with a higher tolerance in terms of the inflation target? as a, with a contextual view around the structure of our economy and the things that we need to be able to do and put in place to build the real capacity of our economy. He said the long-term output gap is, is, in essence, is widening, and therefore that uh, the, the, the pressure continues then to be a very big pressure point that we're going to rely only on, for example, our currency as a big driver of capital flows in the country and not real FDI. And these are some of the things that as much as it's not the primary mandate of the Reserve Bank has to be critical in their consideration. Safiso, I'm going to end off by asking you in extremely simple terms here, if we have to explain to viewers, what would have happened if the Reserve Bank had not increased interest rates, even by 25 basis points this afternoon, and it seizes that cycle? What happens to the economy? What happens to inflation? And what happens to the RAND if he didn't embark on, on, on the cycle? The RAND would have probably gotten a little bit weaker because, of course, investors like the fact that, um, you know, we still, you know, uh, they, they like our currency simply uh, for what it is. And so if they're expecting then uh, other currencies to become more attractive and then they kind of lose interest in our currency a little bit as much as our uh, kind of borrowing or long-term yields are still looking at about 9.5%. So that's one of the things. It would have weakened our currency. What that does is also then it increases the cost of bringing certain goods in, including oil that we use for petroleum. And so that would have also then resulted probably in a, a, a higher expectation in terms of the cost it will take us to bring some of the goods that we bring into the economy. The governor did mention that our trade deficit is expected to weaken. And so the difference between what we give to other countries and what we collect, and therefore uh, that currency weakness would have a material impact, I think, on price levels as well. But on the other side is that small businesses, for example, do borrow and they invest in their own growth. And so when their borrowing costs increase, they don't increase their way, their, 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 in essence, their uh, investment plans for people. And so the impact it can have in terms of secondary effects on employment, on investment, et cetera, when, we, when if the Reserve Bank had not increased, would have had better prospects for an economic recovery. And we saw that the only piece of the a big drive of the recovery so was based on, on, on commodities and not uh, structural changes in our economy. Uh, indeed, it really is a tough balancing act that uh, the MPC has to deal with when considering interest rates. All right, for the moment, Safisa Skenjana, Chief Economist at IQ Business, thanks indeed for your time.